All right, guys, today is the day that I do a full review on this beautiful 378 FC fluke meter. I have gotten the opportunity to try it for almost a week now, and I love it. And I'm going to go over every setting with you guys and everything like that. That way you guys can get a better understanding of how this fluke meter really works. I also here have my Fluke 376 FC and I am going to compare this one to this one so that way you guys can get an understanding for the price difference reasons and you can compare and figure out which one you want to buy. First off, the standard casing for the 376 FC is um, this material casing with the zipper. It's nice, but it doesn't fully protect your Fluke. They do make an optional additional hardcover case separately. The Fluke 378 FC, this one comes with a very hard textured case that is pretty durable and it actually opens up and it has this bungeed onto this case so that way it doesn't move around freely inside the case either. So they pretty much made it very nice and easily accessible. So let's talk about what comes with each Fluke. So with your 376, this is kind of an old fluke. So I've used it plenty and it's got its fair wear and tear on it. So just take that into consideration. This one is brand new, but they're still both great meters. The fluke 376 FC comes with a few things. So it comes with your fluke here. There's your meter. It comes with this iFlex. It comes with your two leads. These are usually have caps on them, but I don't have caps on mine. Unfortunately, I lost them a long time ago. And they also come with this grounding clamp here. Also very old. I don't use it as much. I kind of use this as your, your common in this case. So I don't necessarily use this all the time, but comes with that. This The Fluke iFlex is a flexible current probe that expands the measurement reading to 2500 amps. AC while still providing the measurement flexibility. This new meter comes with a few different things that the other one doesn't come with. So first we have our leads. Your probes go onto your leads just like this and these are actually twist lock. Um, I showed you guys these earlier on my page and I had actually bought them for my current fluke. Here. These are a little different than these ones though that come with the 378 FC. The ones that I bought that were that didn't come with this fluke, you can't pull the probes off. They're directly connected and they still do the same thing though, up and down. Whereas these ones are able, these are a lot thicker too. Or they're still rated for the same voltage. However, these probes can become disconnected just like this. The other thing we have is the brand new iFlex. So it also comes with a grounding clamp so that way you don't have to hold the probe onto the ground. You can actually disconnect the initial probe and you can connect this just like this. So this came separately. Fluke sent me the, they're both alligator clips and I can use these for instead of having to hold the probe on, I'll just clamp this on. It's also pretty convenient. I'm definitely gonna give you guys a more in-depth review on the field sense of everything, but for now I wanna give you the logistics of all of this fluke stuff. So here we go. We are gonna now pull up the fluke. Okay, so here are the two flukes next to each other. So on both of these, I'm gonna go over what they both have and then what this has that this doesn't have. So as you can see, a huge considerable difference is the size of the meter. This one is a lot larger. And the reason for that is a lot of it has to do with the screen. And I'm gonna get a little bit more in depth for that, but I wanna start off with the bottom and work my way up to the top. Down here with your terminals. So those are both the same, no matter what. They're, they're exactly the same. So these are compatible with each other. Then we have the inrush feature, which a lot of fluke meters don't have, but these two both have the inrush feature. This is why I had this one in the first place. I kind of want to go over the different dial settings with the both fluke meters. Everything is the same for the most part until we get to this field sense dial here, which is not on the 376 FC. So we're going to start off here with alternating current function. So this 
you are gonna use your test leads for here and here. This is gonna go into your voltage ohm connection and this is gonna go into your common connection. You are going to place this test lead on whatever line you're working on and then this test lead is gonna go either to the ground or it also go, goes to the other line and this is measured in voltage. Then when we come up here, we are doing direct current same thing, same leads, same location, everything like that. The only difference is we're doing direct current. It's still measured in voltage here. Then if we turn the dial up this way, like this, we are getting into resistance and continuity. So basically you're gonna remove the power from your circuit for this exact test. And you're still gonna use your test leads where they were placed. You're going to touch the probes to the testing point. If the resistance is under 30 ohms, the beeper is going to sound continuously to indicate continuity. If the display shows 0L, the circuit is open. We're going to come up into this area here. So this is where it gets different. This is measuring alternating current. This one, however, is now we're getting into field sense measurements. So the field sense measurements are very specific to the 378FC in that you are testing voltage and amperage at alternating current for basically anything that you would need inside of here. So basically how field sense works is you put your line into here as this is shown and then it will give you your measurements here. The other thing that this does when you put this into this section here has to do with the power health indicator which only is for the 378 and the 378 FC. This power health indicator shows the ratio of the real power compared to the apparent power. So if you notice that in this area, I'm going to show a picture right here just to show you better what I'm talking about. If these little things show up here um, for PQ volts, PQ current, or PQPF, it's outside the optimal range. And this related indicator shows that on the display. So that's a really cool feature too. This one has to do with measuring capacitance. So a good capacitor stores an electrical charge and may be energized after power is removed. Before you touch the capacitor, turn off all the power. So you're going to connect your test leads and then you're going to touch your probes to the capacitor leads. And then you'll see the measurements that's indicated. This will take you to your DC current. So this is going to measure direct current. Um, and this is going to be with your clamp. This will dire measure direct current with clamp. And this one is going to measure uh, voltage with the clamp as well here. This is the clamp. So anything here, this is the same. Um, it's just measuring with the clamp. And you're going to measure alternating current in amps, whereas this one does amperage and voltage. So the last thing I'm going to show you is the iFlex. So when we go into the iFlex setting here, this is why you're going to take this. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to wrap it around your conductors. So it goes in like so. It'll just It goes all the way in just like this. Here's the how to use it. So you're going to connect it and you're going to place it around your conductor. And then it's going to give you the measurements here. And it's going to give you two different signs for if it's under or over 0.5. I don't use the iFlex that often, um, but I will tell you field sense is really awesome. So the last thing that I want to go over is just what pertains to the 378 FC itself. So this clamp is done for the most part. Let's talk about this though. So when we go into field sense, we have a couple of different options as well. So if you hold this down for two seconds, that's going to take you into L1, L2, and L3. So this allows you to measure three phases at once in a matter of like five to ten seconds. You're putting, as L1's beeping, you're going to place your clamp under line one until it gives you a direct measurement. Then you'll notice this goes to line two. You're going to get the direct measurement, and then it'll go to line three. You have about ten seconds in between each clamp that it will save your measurement so that's an awesome feature as well and last but not least we're going to measure inrush so when measuring inrush inrush measures the basically the max um the max amperage that a device can give off when it's initially starting up so this will help you determine max amperage and all you do is you place the wire in the clamp here and you basically hit your breaker on or you hit your disconnect on whatever your device is that you're going for and it should give you 
an immediate number here that will actually be held here. It'll stay here to give you the inrush feature. I'll be showing that on the next thing right here as well, just to give you a sense. So for the most part, these are how these both work. The FC on these both stand for Fluke Connect. I'll do another video about how you can connect to Fluke Connect, but you can save your measurements and track your data with this here. So these were the two meters. I hope this gave you guys a better sense of understanding how these Fluke meters work. Like I said, I love this Fluke meter. This is the first Fluke meter that I ever got as an electrician. But this one blows it out of the water. I love this fucking meter. I can't say enough about it. Um, and I'm going to be using it a lot more in the field. And I'll do some field uh, tutorials as well. It's just a little hard when you're trying to troubleshoot initially and figure out how this thing really works.